Okay, so the topic of this video are the ecological relationships known as symbiosis. Let's go ahead and get started. And so symbiosis are the interactions between two different species that live in a close relationship with one another. Now, underneath the umbrella of symbiosis is something called mutualism and commensalism and parasitism. I'm going to try to break down each of these one at a time. Let's start with mutualism. So mutualism is a symbiotic relationship where two different species interact in a way that benefits both of them. A great example are the picture is the picture of the bee and the flower. The bee benefits by getting nectar from the flower, which they use to produce honey, and the flower benefits by being pollinated. As the bee buzzes around from flower A to flower B to flower C, the bee spreads pollen and helps the flower reproduce, so they both benefit. You know, another example of mutualism is what you see in the picture between this oxpecker bird and a buffalo. They both benefit by a close living arrangement where the oxpecker feeds on parasites that may be within the fur of the buffalo. The bird receives food and the buffalo gets a cleaning. There's all kinds of examples of cleaner animals, not just the oxpecker, but I chose this one just because I think it's a fun visual example. So one final example of mutualism before I move on is the relationship between humans and the bacteria that reside within our gut. We both benefit. People, humans, we benefit from the bacteria because the bacteria help us to digest more complex foods and to absorb more nutrients. And in return, the bacteria are given a home and a stable environment to live in. And so when you look at my table at the bottom, in mutualism, both organism A and B benefit. Let's move on to commensalism next. So for the relationship known as commensalism, in this relationship, two different species interact in a way that one benefits while the other neither benefits nor suffers. A good example would be between jackals and lions. Jackals get food by scavenging the, the kill that the lions have consumed and left behind. So the jackals benefit. They stay a safe distance and they're not a threat to the lions. And once the lions move on and the jackals move in to scavenge, the lions are unaffected by the jackals. Another example are in the form of what are known as air plants, like epiphytes. These are plants that live atop other trees. And so epiphytes are plants that gain access, better access to sunlight because they're elevated and they have a place to grow. So they benefit, but the larger tree that they are living upon is not harmed or benefited in any way. The epiphyte is not a parasite. It's not robbing nutrients from the larger tree. And yet another example of a commensalistic relationship are between barnacles. Barnacles will uh, attach themselves to whales is what you're seeing in this picture. And the barnacle benefits by getting access to food and mobility through the whale's uh, movements. And the whale, as far as we can tell, is unaffected by the barnacles attached to itself. So in my table, one organism benefits and the other is really indifferent. This uh, outlines commensalism. And then the final topic of symbiosis to mention is one called parasitism. Parasites, it's a relationship where one species, the parasite, benefits at the expense of the other species known as the host. In this case, there's a rabbit. And if you look closely right there, there's a tick on the ear of the rabbit. And so a tick is a great example of a parasite. It gets nourishment from feeding off of the blood of the host, in this case, a rabbit. And the rabbit, in this case, um, uh, the mammal, in this case the rabbit, suffers uh, blood loss and the potential transmission of any diseases that may be spread from the bite of the tick. So one benefits and the other is harmed in some way. Another example, this is kind of a really interesting example, are the larvae of parasitoid wasps. They get nourishment um, from the, the larvae get nourishment uh, by consuming the caterpillar. The caterpillar is uh, killed by the larvae that are slowly feeding upon them. And so uh, one benefits and the other is harmed. One final example of parasitism is the fungal infection known as athlete's foot. The fungus benefits because it gains nourishment from the host's skin cell. And the human 
uh, we're, we're the host, we are harmed because this causes inflammation, itching, pain, and can lead to even bacterial infections. And so in the case of my table at the bottom, when it comes to parasitism, one organism benefits and the other is harmed. And as we wrap up this video, there's a little practice quiz right here. And I hope you found this video of symbiosis helpful. Thank you for watching.